Church Tech Weekly presents Infocom 2013, brought to you by Bose Professional Systems, committed to developing best-in-class products, tools, and services to create original audio experiences. All right, continuing our Infocom 2013 coverage, we've swung by our friends at the Digico booth, and I'm here with Matt Larson, and we've got uh, nothing nothing huge, but some really nice upgrades, updates to the software. And one thing I love about Digico is every time you guys come out with something new, something cool, it's always free. And uh, so I know you guys have some new cool upgrades to the patching and stuff like that, so uh, I'm going to let you take it away and show us what we got. Fantastic. A couple things that we've introduced here at the uh, Infocom show is we've always had the uh, SD7, you could have the theater version of it. Available. Well, now we've actually introduced that you can have the T version in the SD10 as well as the SD9. So now the smaller black box regional touring theatrical shows can get all the same attributes that the Tony Award shows in Broadway and West End are using. And that's a simple upgrade. So if you bought a desk four years ago, you could actually upgrade to the, the theater software. Okay. Another thing we just released at the show is uh, version 6.3.4 uh, software. What that did is that added a bunch of additional features. One of them is the ability to, let's say, we've always been able to do our multi-track recording with like our UB Maddie box here. That will do 48 tracks at 48K off of a standard USB 2.0 port. We then have introduced the DigiGrid box, which is an MGB, which is a BNC version, and there's also an optical version. Okay, This will give me two MADI streams that I can record to, and it'll just go to an Ethernet switch that I can plug into my Mac or PC using Logic, Reaper, Nuendo, Cubase, or even a QLab system for theater type of applications. Now the nice thing is, this will run at 48K or 96K. Now let's take a, take a look at some real world examples. So what I can do is I can go to my setup audio I.O., simply pick my rack that I have, where I have that all patched in onto the desk and I hear that through the PA. I can then copy that to MADI port 2. And MADI port 2, I'll plug that into my MGB box, which goes to my multi-track recorder. So I can arm my tracks, hit record, the band does their run through or their performance, I capture everything. At the end, I stop recording, I unarm the tracks, rewind to the beginning. Once they leave, I can come over here and I hit listen to copied audio and I just hit play. Now those tracks are coming back right down the proper channels, just like if the, the performers were on stage at this time. Now a couple other things that we've given you is the ability to go to that other MADI port and instead of it being your standard MADI with 56 channels in, 56 channels out, I do have the ability to make it a MADI 64. So I get the ability to throw eight more inputs and outputs that I can multi-track record. The advantage there is I can actually print, let's say I've got my master left and right, so I could print like my master left and right mix, I could go to a 5.1 surround sound, I could even take like, let's say I've got a lead singer and I might be doing some plugins or some wave stuff and I want to print that on there as well just as a reference. Exactly. So what I could do is that I'm able to do my playback. Now another thing that we've actually added into here is a copy audio page. What copy audio does is that allows me to look at all my inputs and all of my outputs. And I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take this rack here and I'm gonna basically just simply unpatch these or just simply patch these just by dragging my finger so I can do a one for one patching. In addition, if I've got maybe some local um, inputs here with my audience mics, like four audience mics, I can simply come in here to my local I.O and patch those four audience mics in there so those are also being recorded. So this new routing allows me to rebuild any MADI stream from any MADI uh, source, any optical rack, any local I.O. I can rebuild those streams. Now a couple other things is it does also allow me to, to multi-track. I could take like one channel and print that to multiple tracks and then I can go under the setup uh, listen source and I can choose which track is actually playing back live down that same channel. Okay. Now the last thing that we also added into there is the ability like let's say I have just done a run through and I have like maybe four vocalists that need to work on some choreography and some timing but you don't want to hold the rest of the band. You want them just to kind of take a break or go have lunch or whatever. So I can come to their four vocal channels and just hit listen safe. So now when I hit that listen uh, copied audio, those microphones are still live where all the other ones are coming back from your recording device. So we like to technically refer to that as the most expensive karaoke machine you could ever buy. I love it. And as, as somebody that uses uh, Copy to Maddie all the time and, and I send it to a recorder and to a personal monitoring system, the ability to 
we'll very quickly rebuild that audio, that Matty stream, and record local inputs to, Re to Reaper and then be able to play those back. That is a big, big deal, and uh, we're going to use that a lot. It is, and you know, here's like another real world example. We have uh, Bruno Mars out on tour, and what they're doing is they're using some SD racks, but they also have the mini racks, like the four card and the, yeah. the nano racks. And what they did there is they're actually deploying the racks, like they'll put a, a mini rack in like the drum rig or the right. keyboard rig, and then they're just jumping fiber optic from desk to, or from rack to rack to the desk. Yeah. So now there is no stage drop boxes, there's no passive splitters, everything is just accessible, a really nice clean thing. And with the Maddie routing to be able to rebuild your Maddie stream, they're able to actually capture from all the various inputs throughout the whole network. So it's a real clean and effective way of uh, handling all your inputs and outputs. Yeah. Very cool. And uh, from my conversations with uh, Amy and Titus, sounds like this is going to be coming out to uh, users in the next uh, month or so, huh? Actually, it was just released yesterday, okay. so we're ready to go. Okay. Fantastic. So if you own a digital console, be looking for the email. You should be getting uh, updates soon. Yep. And they, we also just released the new configurator. That will actually allow me to go from any version, like an SD7, down to an SD10. And you simply just load it into your computer. You load in like your SD7 file. You pick which desk you're going down to. And if you have less AUG sends, it will say, hey, you're, you have, we'll say, 112 AUG sends, but you're going down to something with 56. You just check off which AUG sends you don't want to use, and then it goes green. Once you've done it to all your augs, your matrix, and your inputs, it's all green. You just hit save session and you're done. It takes about a minute to do a complete conversion and it will do all acts and all scenes. Yeah, which is another big deal. I mean, I, I move show files around sometimes and it, it can be a real pain to rebuild them. That's going to be a huge time saver. So, awesome. Thanks for coming by, Mike. Absolutely. So, you can learn more about all the stuff at digico.biz and uh, you can see it. What's the website for the, uh, the sound grid? Uh, there's digico.tv and sound grid is. Hang on. Okay, and we're back, and the website for uh, SoundGrid is? Digigrid.net. Awesome. <laughs> it's going to be one of the most fun edits we do on this whole thing. <laughs> All right. So, Digigrid.net. Yeah, the website, if you would like to get more information on the Digigrid, you can go to Digigrid.net. Awesome. Very good. All right. Thanks. <laughs>